Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the last review video, at least for a match day. I'm gonna post another review video, like a quick summary of the entire Premier League season, seeing how things went, um, see how my predictions at the beginning of the season worked out, all the, all the good things there. And yeah, but for uh, reviewing actual matches, this is now the last video. And yeah, uh, we have not only the last round to review, but also a bunch of makeup games. It was quite a drama um, filled with pitch invasions. Uh, a little bit in my Serie A video, I touched on it. I honestly, I don't think that, I mean, I understand the emotion behind it. And let's get this out of it before we go at it. Um, I understand the emotion behind it. You know, you want to celebrate with uh, the fellow players and so on. However, this rush of people. Even if it's your own fans, it's not comfortable for anyone there. The other thing is, um, just imagine yourself, if you're working in your office and suddenly a bunch of people come in your office to celebrate with you because you got your cold right. I sometimes wish this would happen. Never happens. <laughs> so yeah, you know, uh, there is a clear delineation. I don't know how to solve that problem. Um, for me, as long as it stays peaceful and fine, but they're always idiots. And we saw it with Patrick Vieira with a fan in his face or whatever. And if I'm Vieira, I mean, he deserved that ass whooping uh, 100, 100%. And there should be no charges filed against him. And the other thing is, of course, uh, the despicable uh, assault on Robin Olsen. What has he done? He's the least offensive guy of them all. He just is there doing his job. Imagine yourself, you're working and suddenly some stranger comes and uh, hits you on the head. This is where it really, really gets to me. And also the mobbing of the players. And not only is it dangerous for the people that are rushing onto their pitch. We, we saw in Stuttgart there was quite a heavy injury. But it's also dangerous for, for the players. And what's the most precious thing for the players it's their own bodies so for that reason i really don't understand it i know that the, all the stewards they are not equipped to that i know it's a last day problem i do understand the emotion when i was younger i also got out there but the one thing it was a sign of the times the one thing that really 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 bugs me those people are not celebrating because they are joyful and are celebrating with him no what what are they doing they're taking their freaking phones out to make selfies with the player yeah i've been on the pitch with the player it's all about me 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 this is what annoys me the most about it this is absolutely the worst thing about the whole thing is this me culture let this is the moment is about the players that have achieved something and yes they are thankful that you the fans are there celebrate with them join with them sing with them whatever keep your flipping phone in the back pocket i actually think when cristiano ronaldo threw the phone from the uh, the kid away i understand this was not the this was not the best person or whatever to to, to do it but i completely understand the thought behind it and people keep it to yourself, all your aggression. But if you run onto the pitch, this is not your turf anymore. So, rant enough. It's just, uh, it just bugs me, the whole thing. Uh, I mean, I, I have to say, even the Milan fans, uh, the way they uh, delayed the celebrations and they mobbed the players. Uh, nah, nah. I know it is great scenes, blah, 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 but you know, uh, you can mob the whole entire city uh, on the parade if you will, will, would, would like, but not like that, honestly. But yeah, uh, we saw, I mean, we saw two notable pitch invasions that, that I mentioned, one at Everton in the midweek, in an amazing comeback for Everton, uh, hence Everton up there, uh, and we saw one at the Etihad for Manchester City, yeah, <laughs> maybe not, you know, I think a match city have proper fans, however, it just just it just feels a little bit false at some points, but I I um, don't want to judge on that as well. Uh, the last thing is I have to say that uh, especially for as far as last day action goes, this was really, really good. And I think uh, even the Premier League should make, I, I think we should, uh, and this is probably an uh, own video, we should have it that every league has at least a few games that are slotted at the same time. I see it in Germany. 
I love watching this. I would not pick any of those games out individually, but if you watch five games or six games at once, five games it's usually, there is always something happening. You are entertained. This is the, uh, if, if you're American viewer, this is like the Red Zone channel. Yes, it is something different if you watch an entire game and you're uh, investing yourself in, into the game, but if you don't really care about the game, this is the best way of watching it, but it's really, really fun. And I think they're doing it in France as, as well, where they, where they call it the multiplex. Um, in all the other leagues, it's just so divvied up. Uh, and, and I think in the Premier League, there are certain games are, 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 are not even shown local, locally, like the Everton Crystal Palace game, which was in Germany, the top game on that evening. Really. <laughs> it, is, it, it, it was just crazy. Uh, what I my bad was that I actually chose the relegation in Germany uh, over the first half of Everton Crystal Palace, but then I quickly flipped because that that game in Germany was not not good at all. So yeah, uh, but yeah, um, what I wanted to get to is it was exciting in many ways. However, there was a little bit of punch missing because at no point was Manchester City actually behind. There was always the threat of being behind, but at no point they were behind. Uh, in the relegation find a similar scenario at least leads leapfrogged at the, uh, at the end and yeah so in that sense it was kind of da, 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 but the way it happened with city being down and coming back that was rather rather remarkable five minutes to glory is all the cities in it and you always have if you city are two nil down they're always gonna come back except against Real Madrid I guess so yeah, let's go into the uh, makeup ma 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 games. Uh, the least interesting one definitely is Chelsea against Leicester City <laughs> and, 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 and one one. Aston Villa Burnley was a whole lot more in interesting. Uh, kicking off 15 minutes after Everton against Crystal Palace, most most crucially, where Ashley Barnes got a penalty goal for uh, Burnley, and you know a win would have uh, really really put Burnley in a great position. Uh, a win might not have been uh, enough necessarily, but it would have put them in a really, really, really good position. However, Buendia gets an equalizer, and so Aston Villa, who actually were the team that had, that had the most to say in the relegation race and in the title race, manager won one. So at that point, Burnley was level with Leeds uh, and better goal div uh, the difference. Over at Goodison, a major, major comeback. Uh, Mateta giving Crystal Palace an early lead, then Ayu should have been sent off. I do not understand this, how this is not looked at. The way he gets goes attacking, that is more than a yellow card. And it's exactly Ayu who gets the goal, uh, which was a messy goal uh, in, any, in any case. However, I, I had this gut feeling that Everton at least are going to try because the crowd were rockers, they were really going for it. I really thought that Everton will go for it because this was their one shot. And similar to what happened then on the weekend, I mean, uh, it was a pretty uh, smart sub substitution to put Deli Ali on to give a little bit attacking spark uh, for Everton up front. And then Mike Keane gets uh, the goal that gives some hope back in the 54th. I mean, even a point probably would not have been too bad, but you know, uh, you really, actually, you really want to have the win. To be honest. I mean, we know now in hindsight the point would, would have been up. As soon as Richarlison in the 75th gets the equalizer, it was absolutely clear what uh, that this was only gonna go one, one way. The momentum was swinging towards Everton, and there is some there's something about it that rarely, especially when you don't have much to play for anymore, rarely the momentum will swing the other way again, unless the team that is chasing. Um, is in a uh, is too nervous or not too settled in in themselves, and then in the end, uh, Gray Cross and Calvert Lewin, uh, Lewin um, heads it in with a flying header, a peach perfect goal. He was celebrating first pitch invasion. Then it got a little bit nervy too. To it was also uh, I really thought that Everton is gonna make it four uh, two, but actually they had to hang on to that a little bit. Uh, and then, of course, scenes and as I talked already about the ugly, ugly stuff that have happened there. But I was really, really, really happy for Everton because I think Everton is a team that belongs in the, in the Premier League. And also because of my friend Andy, who is an uh, Everton supporter. And I have another former colleague who is an Everton supporter. I really think uh, it would not have been quite right. The one thing that I really hope now is that Everton get their SHIT together and really start building something. And I'm afraid... Not that I think he's, he, he is a great coach, but there will be another coaching change coming next year. It just 
seems to be written in the stars a little bit. I really hope not, honestly. I really don't uh, hope so. At this point, Everton were safe. Most important thing for them, Everton were safe and Burnley were level with Leeds. Of course, if they would have had 37 points, in the end, it wouldn't have, no, not been enough, but it would have uh, really drilled a little bit more of a nail in the coffin of Leeds United. Which setting up a final round where, in theory, and with some, uh, so mathematically possible, every position could have changed. I heard uh, that is actually uh, quite, quite exciting. We had three races and I don't want to start where everyone else started with the title race. I actually want to start on the bottom with uh, the Burnley game and, and with the Leeds game. Leeds make the escape and uh, full disclosure, I did not watch this live. I was watching Serie A, Milan, this was for me the most important thing. I recorded that they only showed the two teams, uh, Liverpool and Man City. And then I saw uh, some, suddenly, I think, a, a, a way they uh, pop up, up with the video. Uh, the moment Leeds are safe and, I, and I, it was kind of, yeah, I'm really happy that Leeds are up there because Leeds is another team. I'd rather have Leeds than Burnley in the Premier League, just because it's a bigger team with, with loads of history. Uh, so I, I was ha I was happy. Now, of course, Leeds scored early, uh, but it was taken off for offside uh, through Gellhardt. But um, over in Burnley, uh, Cal uh, Callum Wilson, they made it 1-0 for Newcastle. So at this point, as soon as Newcastle took the lead, Leeds were actually safe because Leeds had one point more. They had to just better what Burnley are, uh, are doing. It got then even better for Leeds fans because Rafinha, uh, with a penalty, gave the lead to, uh, to, to Leeds, whereas Callum Wilson doubled the lead. Uh, however, Cornet pulls one uh, back a little bit more. So, so it's 2-1. Uh, Wout Weichos has come on. He had then a pretty uh, big uh, chance missed and I think that transfer did not work out, 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 out at all and then uh, when uh, Canos equalized for Brentford you really thought it is now it's tight because now a goal by Burnley will send Leeds down again however it never came um, a fun exchange was of, of course that Chris Wood came on for New Newcastle remember in the winter when he switched from Burnley to Newcastle, we all, th all thought, yeah, on the last day of the season, he might actually be the decider. Well, Newcastle are rather safe that the rather remarkable turn turn, turn turnaround. Um, Brentford had uh, goal, the, their goal scorer then sand, sand off for a second uh, yellow within a few, a, few, a few minutes. And then late on, Harrison scores the winner for Leeds and Leeds are safe. And yeah, I'm... I know that Jesse Marshall was a Salzburg coach, but I actually took a liking to him in a way. I he's very American in many ways, but I think there is a good coach in there. And if he can, he has the support from the back uh, of the boardroom. I think he can really do something uh, with this Leeds United team. Uh, we gotta see about that. The other race was, of course, between Arsenal and Spurs for the last top four spot. And yeah. I always said that if Everton needs to get something from Arsenal, I would assume that they would get something. That they lost now 5-1, I think it's made mostly down that I think Everton were just cel celebrating the staying up and that game didn't matter and Arsenal just uh, needed to end the season on a high. A season that was so up and down. Spurs never had a shadow made a shadow of a doubt it was very 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 much like a milan they just went to norwich and beat them 5-0 kulisevsky scored going a brace harry kane scored going one um a human song actually missing a few chances but he gets them two goals to actually secure him the uh, the golden boot which is, of course is shared uh with mohammed salah who also scored on the last match they will get to him as well that's uh human song you know it already is one of my favorite players in the Premier League. I, I'm actually absolutely in awe. I think he's super underrated. That there is no real uh, push of another club to sign him is to me a, doesn't really quite compute. He's absolutely amazing. He's an absolutely amazing player. And yeah, I'm very happy for him. I'm actually also very happy for Spurs. I, I told you before, I figured out that Spurs and Lask have very much many things in common. So yeah, I'm finding a little bit of love for Spurs, to be honest with you. Uh, and yeah, they were probably even one of the first teams of from England that I was personally aware of because Gary Lineker played for them. 
And then I remember when um, in the Cup Winner Winners Cup, um, uh, Spurs had won the FA Cup, I think. And they had to play in Austria against the Austrian Cup winner, Stockerau. Yeah, exactly. And they won twice, and then they actually had to play in Linz and uh, to against Hayduk. And um, so, I was always aware that Tottenham exists more than many of the other teams in England. I think they, uh, I really want to say they're one of the first teams that I, I was uh, English teams that I was really, really aware. Uh, surely I had heard about Liverpool and maybe Manchester United at some point, but I think uh, Spurs are probably the first team that I really heard about. Uh, so yeah, take it for what it is. Um, if I look at the squads between Spurs and Arsenal, I think that Spurs are more of a Champions League team, although I don't think they're the fourth best squad. That would have been another team that I'm not even going to mention. And they are, they are not even on, on, on the wall there. Let's put, put it with that, but they share a city with the uh, new champions. But uh, unspeakable season for them. So yeah, Spurs over Arsenal. Arsenal, I think in the end you have to see that you are back in Europe. You had, I think, over a successful season. Yes, you threw away a top four spot that looked at least twice really in your wheelhouse and you threw it away at the end of the, of, of the season. But I think there's something growing there. If you keep with the project, something might be coming. It will not be easy. This was probably a unique chance um, in some ways. However, maybe not. So we got to see. And now we come to the title race. And as I said, for me, the big downer is that um, it never, it never was that Liverpool was ahead of City. That would have, that would have uh, thrown the extra spice in. Uh, however, there were, <laughs> there, there were a few remarks. With I mean, first of all, that uh, Wolves, Liverpool attacked immediately, then get caught in the counter with a long ball. And... Uh, that Liverpool got caught out twice or three times even in the first first half with huge chances for Wolves with long balls is something I probably Real Madrid will have a good good look at for the Champions League and yes the Champions League final uh, informed a lot of the team selection I think for Jurgen Klopp as well uh, so Neto uh, gives Wolves a shock lead early on which then um, was equalized by Sadio Mane with a brilliant Thiago assist. Uh, Liverpool, of course, having more of the game, but uh, they definitely were a little bit shaken. Um, Juan Hichan came on for Neto uh, for an injury a little bit uh, um, before the uh, equalizing goal, and Juan also had a pretty good chance there. So, over in uh, Manchester City, it's 1-1 in Liverpool. Villa, who fought bravely. Yes, City had loads, loads, loads of control, but uh, looked a little bit clueless uh, in terms of what can I do. Cash gives them the lead with the first shot on goal. And that's all. Everyone thought, is Villa gonna do the job? Can they do the job? Yes, they can do the job. At the halftime, Guardiola uh, actually makes the first game with Sinjenko for Fan Fair, 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 He had his last game, but did not really work out. And Sinjenko actually action on the left kind of was a little bit more providing uh, the attacking with then he brought in uh, Raheem Sterling for Riyad Mahrez and uh, Gundogan for Bernardo Silva but once that exchange was made Oli Watkins plays a ball into Coutinho makes it 2-0 at this point it needed only a goal by Liverpool they actually had that goal but Mane and well, he was a good meter of side it was a clear side had the 2-1 lead if that goal would have stood I think City may have folded, although I think City may. I'm not 100% sure in that one. However, then uh, as soon as Gundogan came off with uh, Sterling and Sinchenko, suddenly you had the attacking with, you uh, had the patterns, and in five minutes, from the 76th to the 81st, City scored three times, twice Ilka Gundogan, who had his personal Aguero moment, uh, Rodri, a bit, when that goal from Gundogan went in, you really had the feeling, yeah, uh, City's gonna do that. Now, before that, again, I watched this on a replay, uh, but I didn't know. Yeah, I, I knew unfortunately there, 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 there result because during the Milan broadcast they said that. <clears throat> uh, so I, I watched it in fast forward. But I then thought at one point, did it really happen that Villa? win 2-0 at City and Liverpool cannot get the win against Wolves, which is the worst way to lose the title. Because that will mean you have not done your job. Similar to what happened to Cagliari um, in many ways. 
But no, City win it. They turn to they, they, they turn around, and um, only then Liverpool also get the win through goals for Mohamed Salah, who then goes level with a human song, and Andrew, Andy Roberts in the 89. So it was never really, really there for Liverpool. It almost was there if Mane would have scored. And I really would have liked to see at least that because that would have put some extra pressure on City. Although City knew we need to get that win. In the end, I think overall, especially if you look at the season, it was probably just about deserved that City win the title. I think City are more complete squad. They are an awesome team. Yes, you may, like me, have a little bit problem with the construct of City, but as a team, I think they're absolutely amazing. And for that reason, I think they deserve it. I mean, we saw, we said in January, uh, it's City's to lose, and that Liverpool only dropped, since the 1-1 at Chelsea, or 2-2 at Chelsea, they only dropped points against Spurs, they won it all. This was a rather remarkable uh, second half of, 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 of the season for Liverpool, and you can go in the first half and see, where did we lose these points? Really. But I think overall, I think it's right that City win it. As much as I would have liked Liverpool to win another title, to not make it 4 or 5 for City, to have really this rivalry be a proper rivalry in some regards. So yeah, Manchester City win it. Here is the final sta table standings. We have um, City ahead of Liverpool. Then Chelsea and Spurs round out the top four. Arsenal right there. It seems that the London teams are rather close. Chelsea, we have to see how they develop. Uh, United make it into the Europa League. I really would have loved to for West Ham United to win the final game. They lose to uh, Brighton. To, but now we have West Ham and Conference League. Uh, Brighton with a credible top four, spin, uh, top four finish. Everton leads safe. And Burnley, Watford and Norwich are going down. And if you look at it, probably those are three teams that... Yeah, sounds about right that those three are going down. So yeah, that concludes for now the Premier League thing. I said I, I'm going to do an overall review v, 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 v video and so on. But yeah, let me know what you thought about the final match in the Premier League. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this uh, as well. And I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell, so in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.